Hello, this is Mr. Baker, and I would like to take a few minutes to describe the politics behind our play, Henry IV, Part One. Of course, it's embedded in actual history, and uh, yet we know that Shakespeare will take liberties with the history. So I think I'll be safest if I stick with the barest of outlines. I hope you can follow with my cursor here as I explain what the political issues are in our play. It all starts with Edward III, who reigned for 50 years. And um, during his long reign, he had lots of uh, children, uh, many of whom survived remarkably for that day. The eldest being his uh, son Edward, known as the Black Prince. There was a, a, a next uh, boy who did not survive childhood. And then Lionel, Duke of Clarence, John of Gaunt, and then a whole bunch of other daughters and uh, sons. So anyway, uh, it would be expected that if Edward III died, his eldest son in that day, would certainly succeed him. Uh, however, if you look at the dates carefully, and the dates in parentheses are the dates uh, from birth to death, you'll see that Edward the Black Prince uh, was in fact killed in battle, and he predeceased his father by one year. This meant uh, that the eldest son would not succeed, but instead, unfortunately, uh, the next king uh, was a child, Richard II. And this was unfortunate for him, too, because uh, his affairs uh, were managed um, until he was of age. And uh, then he became embroiled in a number of controversies. One of these controversies involved his uncle, uh, John of Gaunt. Uh, when John of Gaunt uh, who was a close advisor to Richard II, died, uh, Richard, in fact, uh, seized some of his lands and through a, a controversy that I will describe in another recording, ended up uh, banishing his cousin, Henry, uh, who uh, also is known in our plays as Bolingbroke. He will become, for our play, of course, Henry IV. So Henry was banished, came back uh, with a grievance uh, against Richard II, and ended up deposing Richard II, taking the throne himself. Uh, and Richard died mysteriously uh, in the Tower of London. Uh, there are different rumors as to how he met his end. Possibly he was simply starved to death. A nasty bit of cousin-to-cousin uh, -cousin business. So our uh, history is embedded in the story of Edward III to Richard II, Henry IV, and then uh, his eldest son is, in our play, Hal, who will become Henry V. But that's somewhat beside the point because the conflict in which Henry IV is embroiled, of course, involves, among others, the Percy family who helped him to the crown. And uh, this is how <clears throat> they uh, support their grievance. If you notice on the family tree here, uh, John of Gaunt, uh, was not next in line of succession to Edward the Black Prince horizontally. Uh, instead, Lionel, Duke of Clarence, was the next eldest. He had a daughter who married Edward Mortimer, Earl of March, who had a son, Roger Mortimer, Earl of March who had another son, Edmund Mortimer, Earl of March. The Percys rally around this line 
of succession. Because seeing that Richard II was childless, uh, certainly he left no heir to the crown after his death. And Henry IV, uh, according to the Percy's, is not truly next in line. And we'll see that the Percy's have a personal interest in this, no pun intended. In fact, Henry Percy, our hotspur, is married to a Mortimer. Kate is the elder sister of Roger Mortimer. And to make matters even more complicated and to help form the alliance that we hear about in the story, a younger brother of Roger Mortimer, Edmund Mortimer, is married to the daughter of Owen Glendower. So these allies form a rebellion against Henry IV, who of course rebelled against Richard II. It is all rather fitting and rather murky in Shakespeare as Shakespeare somewhat conflates or combines his Mortimers. So I have given you a self-assessment for this little history, uh, political history, uh, behind our play. I'd like you to take it, and then I would like you to ask any question that occurs to you about this family tree or related issues, and that will complete your assignment. Thanks for listening.